You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is the sales energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets successful, successfully, successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Boom! That's exactly it. Do that. Let's do that. Chris Stone, my man. It's It must be Wednesday. There's <laughs> stone on the air. That's how we roll. I like that. I might use that. I might like that. I create a t-shirt or something. The stone on the air? There's stone stone there's, on the air. I, yeah. There's something there. There's okay. something there gotta, with stone on the air. We got to work on it. You see, that's, I mean, that's what, uh, by the way, that's what people do when they're, if people get writer's block and things like that. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of sales. All right. I'm into it now. Stand back. A lot of sales is nothing more than copywriting verbally, you know, and a lot of uh, copywriting is just a sales presentation written down on paper. And so when you're trying to put Mm. together a presentation, I always tell people, man, just start talking. And then something will come out and you'll say something like stone on the air. And then you got something to work with. You know, it just goes like that. What do you think of that for a little just wisdom right off the bat? I like that. And if we're, we're going to like segue a little bit into like tech tools, you can use Google for that. You got to open up a Google Doc and it, and it can transcribe and all the things that you say just start. Yeah, now, they don't get all the words right, though. So sometimes you'll say, you know, pickle and the word yeah. will be something else you probably yeah, wouldn't say. Olive. You know, well, no, I mean, it's yeah. really close. <laughs> but, <laughs> Those are... <laughs> <laughs> but the uh the thing is it doesn't matter because your first draft of whatever you write is screwed up anyway so you're gonna have to go back through it too hey really funny story can i tell you a story and this is just for me and you. it's your show you can tell as many stories as you want june klein is backstage eating all our cookies and drinking all of our orange juice so that's right well this is for her too and so i i went to uh visit a prospect uh way up north, uh, an hour or so north of where I was. And then right next door, they had a knife store. And, uh, you know, I, I was told, my dad told me, Uh he says, you know, always carry a pocket knife. You know, he's always, a a man isn't a man who doesn't carry a pocket knife. And so (laughs) I, you know, and there was a knife store. There was a knife store next to this place. I'm like, I've never been in a knife store. I didn't know there was such a thing as a knife oh, store. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really cool. They have all these, you know, kind of hunting stuff and outdoorsy things and kitchen knives, and they made their own knives. And then they had a sharpening thing. And so the guy was showing me the sharpening thing. And I'm like, I can't stay here all day. And so I told him I got to leave. And then the, uh, so another customer was watching us do this thing. And he says, I would think you would be making a video about this thing. And I looked at him and I said, excuse me? And he says, you're the Deej, right? And I'm like, all of a sudden, instantaneously, my head grew three sizes. And I felt felt compelled to like, you know, turn it on. (laughs) Of course. And be funny and all this stuff. And I'm thinking to myself... I don't really know what to say to to Mm. engage this thing and be funny. And then I said, you know, thank goodness tomorrow, which is today, we have the actual person who can teach us how to actually be funny on cue, which is near impossible. Uh, When someone says, hey, you should watch this guy. He's funny. It's it screws everything up. But our next guest actually figured out a way to do it. And so without any further ado, please help me welcome my friend and just a gift for humanity, Miss June Klein. Here she is. Hands in the air. Keep your hands in the air like you don't care. Okay, now this is what I do. Raise the roof. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep them up. Oh. We're gonna have, you, have you add a little shake like you're going eight. Okay? This is how eight. And then you're going to add your mouth. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, come on, let's do it. 
Ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, Dan. <laughs> You're eating grass now. Woo. Okay. All right, there you have it. See? That's that was fun. Guy. I'm in the movie in the store right there. So many things, so many things to say. I did just go ape. Have you go ape? And let me explain that really quickly. It's mm -hmm. a uh, well, hold on one second. Are you hearing crunchy or is that just me? Crunchy? Yeah, there's a there's yeah the, there's a there's a little bit of your of uh, clipping in your in your microphone. So are you are you uh do you have things in your ears and your hair is touching it, or are you just using your mic from your thing? Oh, oh is it this? Hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> I meant <laughs> if you had a headset, but that's good. You have very nice lobes. I apologize. Keep going. Is that better? No, I think so. I think it is. Okay. But I think that I, did the trick. I had dangly earrings in my, my hair. So uh, there you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> there you it. go. There you go. I think, I think when we went ape, the yeah. internet, the internet just it exploded. Exploded. It exploded. So wow. when you do, you do that with like executives and in uh, presentations and all that stuff. Yeah, really? Yeah. Especially if it's after lunch then I just say, hey, can you trust me? Are you going to trust me? And so I buy, I get them to buy in with that just a little bit. And then I have them go, ape. Hey, some do, some don't. We'll talk about that a little later. But they always start laughing when I have them act like they're eating grass. But then you never have anybody do anything stupid without a point. So here's the point. I just had you go, ape, which stands for awareness, permission, and fun. That's it. Ape. Wait, wait a wait. minute. Wait a minute. Uh, awareness, permission, and fun. That's A P H. Or I'm sorry, that's A P F. Oh. <laughs> we, we got more problems here than I thought. Okay. A P F doesn't spell anything, does it? Uh, but if you have people go ape, they will always remember now awareness, permission, and to have fun, which means you have to change things up. It has to be a surprise, which is what I just did with you all. And once I do that with a group of execs or people, um, an audience, then they like me more better. And because it's, it's something really silly and really goofy that they don't normally do. But, oh, my gosh, the people that have told me, emailed me, texted or whatever to say, I went ape. And it saved everything. There you that, have it. All right. That's how she rolls. But I mean, that's, I mean, that's a difficult thing. And I run into that because, you know, you give, sometimes you, you give presentations and people, uh, you know, they'll give, they'll do their, their introduction of you and they'll say something like, oh, and this guy, be prepared to laugh. This guy's really, funny. and they put that extra pressure on you. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it screws you up, but you actually do presentations on teaching people how to be funny. How do you, how do you take, how do you satisfy the audience when the expectations are that high? Well, I have to go, I'm going to tell you a little story of uh, back in the day. And, uh, Is it, there's Russell gotta be so, hold on. There's gotta be something covering your microphone or something. It wasn't like that before. Is there any? Is, is the mic in your iPad, June? Is that yes. is that what you're using as your oh, as your mic? And then there, uh, do you have any head? Do you have any headphones in at all? No. In your ears, none. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. I think that's that that's that's likely. Do you, are you able to plug in headphones at all to the iPad? You know that would have been good to have right here, wouldn't it? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, listen. That, that's what it is. Now you have to teach people how to be funny uh, when they can't hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm so sad. Well, I will. I, I well, here we are. So, um, let me. Yes. Yeah, so, how do you satisfy the customer when uh, the audience when they have, you know, unusually high expectations, or you know, it's a. Let me let me change the question because I find that it's a very entertainment rich society we're in right now, where people go and just want to be entertained and you can get entertained by real professionals anytime you want, you know, like real top-notch people. Uh, even high schoolers are unbelievable now if you go to these plays and things. Uh, and so their expectations are even higher. Um, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? And how do you teach other people to, to, you know, be funny and be amusing 
whenever okay. people's expectations are there. I'm afraid to move now because I'm afraid that it's making noise. However, um, what I what I always do is, is it still making noise? No, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, great. So there is a process, Dan, and I have uh, this this five step process to help people know where to find the funny. And one of the things I always have them do is to start out with something funny about themselves. And so I would, that's why I would ask you, did anything just come to mind that you can talk about here on daytime uh, TV and have, have that IMO is what I call them idiot moments. Uh -huh. And so you're, you're looking at, you're looking at something that can allow you to drop the wall down real quick so that people know you're human and they like you because, and here's, here's a nugget. Here's one you want to write down. Mm -hmm. It is the emotion that runs through it. So when you tell your embarrassing story or your humiliation story or your wow story, whatever it is, that the audience can relate to the emotion of it, then you have them right there, right then. Oh, very good. And so I remember a million years ago when my kids were small, Sophie was 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 small. Oh my, I can't even tell this story. Okay, but Sophie, no, it's, 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 it's because she would kill me. All right, so um, she was small and I was thinking about a different story. I'll tell you this one. This is no problem. So, and you know, when you're a kid and uh, they, somebody puts a kick me sticker on your back, you know, if your kids ever do that to you. Yeah. But, and so I knew she had put the, did you just turn your phone upside down? <laughs> is that, <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so she put a kick me sticker on my, well, it's uh, this way. There we go. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, these, you know, this IMOs. is better than the story. Anyhow, I forgot that the kick me sticker was on my back and we went to a restaurant and all these people were, come, you know, you know, kind of giggling, whatever. When I came out, finally, somebody sat down and told me, hey, dude, you got a kick me sticker on your back. And I said, OK, whatever. And uh, you know, I talked to a bunch of people over there. And then when we left, I, I took it off. I said, slap that thing back on my back. It was the greatest networking tool I ever had. You know, because people feel comfortable yep. coming up to you and talking to you about that because they can relate to their own life. Can you? So I don't. I don't think. I don't, she, uh, she can hear us. We can't hear you, June. But this okay. is this is amazing. This is, we needed this. I think okay, this is you. the yeah. All right. So I think June. Maybe you you you've got your iPad. Can you turn it and get it to where you get yourself uh, sort of right side up? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You got to learn how to read lips. Yeah, it's read lips. Go ahead yeah. and take your eye. You got an iPad? Take your phone, whatever, and turn it. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. I think maybe the challenge was her internet was no good. Okay. Now it's probably muted. You know, when something screws up, it gets. Yeah. So, so here, it, this is, this is but, live tech. But she doesn't have a mute button. Well, listen, Hey, this is what happens on a sales call. This is very good. You know, Marty Friedman has to deal with this all the time. Sometimes you're on a, uh, on a sales call and everything goes wrong and you need to be able to heal. I mean, I mean, to deal with when a nose lands on your uh, uh, nose lands on your fly, when a fly lands on your nose and you just gotta, you just gotta deal with it and have fun with it. So, a, a June Klein should, and if she was an excellent salespeople like I hear know you, all you people are, you need to read lips. You are muted. She can't. Hey, you know what? Is there a little private? Oh, she won't get Here, it. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to put this on the screen. Yeah, put um, it on the screen. Go back out of the stream yard and then come You know, June Klein is a friend of... Uh, Allison Wonders, who was here a couple weeks ago, and she was the one who uh, was the ventriloquizer. And so if she were here, she could read lips. Okay, go back. At Come speed. back. Come back. We'll be here. Okay. <laughs> you think? I think that that will hopefully yes. do the trick. That, that works sometimes. You know, uh, 
we, you and I, and actually salespeople out there have mm -hmm. been using technology for a while, especially with the past, with the virus thing and all that stuff. And we've kind of gotten used to it, not realizing that many people for two years were just, you know, putzing around again, being entertained, uh, watching TV, watching, you know, they know how to receive it. Right. But when you have to start broadcasting, it's a, it's a, it's another learning curve. Mm hmm. And, you know, and it, it's important to know that that you you think that your prospects and your customers. Uh, I I used to, I used to when I was younger and I would go through sales training that these old guys with gray hair would tell us, "Hey, listen, don't expect your prospects to know to know much. Pretend like they have the knowledge of a third grader." And I remember thinking it's so demeaning. To think that when you're, you're it's like, no, I want to look at these people. But actually, the uh, salespeople are more teachers and guiders and leaders. They really guide somebody to the sale more mm -hmm. than more than anything else. So uh, a lot of times in sales presentations, what you can do is just say, hey, you probably know this, but and then just go on to it and do it. And so so June, you probably. Back? You are back and we yes. can hear you. Yes. And so, and you're the right way up too. This is yeah. just, and so this, I want to, hey. I, so I got to thank you, June Klein, because many times in entertainment, when you're on, trying to be funny, you're forced to stretch, you know, you're forced just to keep on. And talking. it was brutal, June. Yeah. Wait, till yeah. you go back and, and watch so the replay. You. He was really, I whew. needed you. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> the craziest June Klein. All right. So uh, we we were talking about uh, uh, wearing pajamas on a sales call. And so how did you uh, how did you come up with that idea? I'm, I'm wearing them now. Okay. No, I'm wearing pajamas on a, a sales call. I, I uh, pay very was little that, attention to what a, I'm saying. OK, this is let me show you. This is what I used to wear on a sales call. Yes. Something oh. Like this. Oh, are those prescriptions? Are, yes. <laughs> are something like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, the clown nose is good. Nobody is in a bad mood wearing a clown nose. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. okay. There's this. Okay. Oh my God! I don't think I don't think we can wear that now. Yeah. Yeah. Another one. Uh, you know, you can you can make an inference. So. So when you when you wore the elephant nose, what were the responses when you go in? I mean, did you actually do that? Yeah, I know what I would say. What Chris Stone would say is that an elephant nose on your face, or you're just glad to see me? But that's him. He's crazy like that. He'll do stuff like that. Now, but did, what what do people say to you? I will, I will say that I did cease to wear the elephant nose, but I was, it was, for me, it was, it was because I'm an Alabama fan, for God's sakes. And so, oh, oh, roll tide. Roll tide. So a pachyderm, where is, is what we, we are, is, you know, elephants. Mm. A pachyderm? A pachyderm. pachyderm. You've never heard that term? The pachyderm? Heard, what are you, some sort of rhyming guy? Yeah, you know, like Dr. A pecking derm, I hear you that heard term. <laughs> I think I'll have a worm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the mic. It has a germ. Vote <laughs> for me on another term. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So uh, I really loved wearing my elephant nose. But mm. uh, when a gentleman in the airport came running up behind me one time and said, ma'am, ma'am, you dropped your apparatus, I decided it was not something that I needed to continue to do. So, but All the right, point well, is, yes, when what I is was the point? sales for student loans, I, I, I had to find a way to make myself look different than the 411 other lenders that were calling on colleges. Hmm. So I came up with funny ways to enter and then Sometimes the, the receptionist would go into the director and say, there's a woman outside with a clown nose on. And he would say, oh, that's June Klein. Tell her to come on in. Mm. So oh. it became a fun thing that I did, which is how I quit my day job and began to do this full time. Well, that is I love awesome. That. Okay. I love, so I love how June, uh, you know, you, you own it. Right. And I think, 
you didn't just wake up like that. You probably had, um, you know, 30 different failures of pachyderm noses and other things that, that, you know, didn't work until you got to the point uh, where there's a bunch of stuff that, that does work. And I think people, do you think people are sort of afraid, like they want to be too perfect and they don't want to make those mistakes. Maybe that's why they're they're They don't call They don't think they're funny or they don't think like they don't work at trying to be funny because they're afraid of those idiot moments. I think you're spot on, Chris, because I say it's it's the three F's. It's either a fear, frivolity or um, forgetfulness we just forget and so that depend that see i just did that really yeah good. that was good that was that was, <laughs> that, was, that was really good was that intentionally unintentional yeah. what was that i was i love that intentionally because i used to say that i was intentionally june klein but then i became unintentional about it and so i had to quit but i am mean, looking at um it, it was a gradual progression, but what really brought me into the full-time world of making my clients, my customers laugh out loud, because I was in student financial aid for 16 mm -hmm. years, you know, there's nothing funny about student financial aid until there is. I started collecting student bloopers that were hysterical, some very sad, but they were hysterical. And I started uh, I want you to remember, I'm, I'm teaching you things through here. So really quickly, okay. I want you to, three seconds, you really need to always remember this. It needs to pop in your brain in three seconds. That might be a challenge for some of us here, but it is about being real, relevant, and relational. Real, relevant, mm. and relational. So that's the, the filter that needs to come through your brain before it comes out your mouth. Because that's where stuff happens when you think you're going to be saying something funny and it's dependent on the ears of the listener. So you've got to put that through that filter that quick. And I was making fun, making light of students' applications. So for instance, well, let's just go straight to the core here. Um, under sex on the application, we would have just a little blank for somebody to put in an F for female or an M for male. And they would write an epistle and they would tell us, yes, no, sometimes, <laughs> twice, <laughs> once in Valdosta again. And, you know, so <laughs> you can't make that up. And it wow. was real and it was relevant. And it became relational because I volunteered to give a speech. I'd never mm. given a speech. I didn't know, but I had this dozen of bloopers that were hysterically funny. And so I, I started there. I volunteered to give a speech over a funny, a, what was it, humor and financial aid. Well, that made everybody laugh because there was no humor in financial aid. I brought humor to financial aid. That's and awesome. I had 300 of my closest peers and colleagues in, you know, in a ballroom, I, I was terrified. My knees were knocking, my mouth was full of cotton. I thought I was gonna pass out. I, I didn't know what I was getting into. That's and awesome. I stood up, standing ovation, and a woman came up afterward and said, how much would you charge to come do that at our association? And I jokingly said, well, how much have you got? <laughs> I thought 50 bucks. She said, we have a thousand dollar honorarium and of course we pay your travel. I am so there for you. Yeah. And that's how it began over 30 years ago. Isn't that funny? That's yeah. uh, that is just great. But I think you nailed something. You got to find something funny where there's nothing in there. So the driest thing, the most, you know, serious, un, you know, that, that's nobody would expect humor. You find humor in there and you got yourself an open market. That's great. So what are other, so I mean, I love that by the way, funny in the financial markets, um, especially when go. it's going down, <laughs> you know, you want to, well, you, you look for what, what are the major problems and how can you stretch it, uh, turn, uh, twist it, turn it, tweak it just a titch so that it's funny. So you hmm. look at you're the just like the queen of the uh, what are they? Not onomatopoeias. What are they? Alliterations. Alliterations. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Yeah, 
that on She's a like monop- the- I think it's up. It's got many legs, a little caterpillar looking thing. Onomatopoeia are words that sound like what they are. Speaking so- of caterpillars, do you run <laughs> over them and with your Harley? Is are you still are you still out? Oh, are you still the the motorcycle Harley riding humorous? Absolutely. As a matter of a man, do I have a story to tell you about that? But we won't go there today. But she's in the shop right now. There it is. There it is. Uh, and I have to say, no duct tape was involved in that picture. <laughs> uh-huh. I accused of duct taping myself to good golly Miss Molly, but that is not the case. So you are perched I'm- on there and are about as happy as someone could be. So yeah. that's that's a great picture. That is that uh, Stone Mountain, maybe? Where is that? No, that's over in at Ackworth Lake. I'm in ah. Kennesaw. So. Um, Lori K. Stone, is she related to you, Chris? Do you know Lori K? Uh, I know Lori Stone. Uh, she is my sister-in-law, lives in <laughs> Alden, Michigan. Well, Maybe not are... the same, Lori. She's Lori. She doesn't go by Lori K. Well, Lori K. is well, who... in Atlanta, and she is one of the best photographers on the planet. So oh, and I'm... Oh. I'm glad you're there because I was going to tell you to go there because I want, look at that logo. Isn't that awesome? That's it's beautiful. So, I'm so excited because it incorporates the infinity of loves of love, the infinity, which laughter is infinity as well. See, once you make somebody laugh out loud, you have forever changed their brain chemistry with their association to you. So that's why it's so powerful, and that's why I'm so passionate about getting people to understand. You got to make people laugh, people. And Wait, you don't have to be so is it? Does it make a difference if they laugh at you or oh, laughed you. with you? Massive oh. difference. Massive. Is- Thank you for that right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because so- I get some people that just you know laugh at me, or it, you know, there's a cringe laugh too where people feel sorry for you and they laugh you that way. So if you're changing their brain, you know, it's, it's like, I, uh, I think I told you this story, uh, Chris Stone. I walked, I was trying to get a hold of this guy, uh, uh, Mike O'Brien at this, at this place. And I was going there. I, I probably was there six times trying to meet this guy and I can never get a hold of him, but all the other you know, the, the ladies in the office kind of knew me after I kept on calling on Mike O'Brien. And so I, I walked in and I heard somebody say, oh, here he is again. And and so when he said, here he is again. And so I'm like, OK, well, what? I, and then out of my mouth, I heard these words and I haven't said them before and I never said them since. But I screamed out loud, who does a guy have to sleep with to see Michael Bryan in this place? <laughs> And exactly that, you know, that it was like a, you know, stunned silence in the room and all that stuff. And, but the greatest thing, the oldest woman in the place, went, not me, but maybe Rachel. It was like, awesome. (laughs) And uh, anyway, it was, it it was all, and we had a, we had a big, but by the way, when she did that, it was like a, a, like a total release valve that allowed everybody to kind of laugh. Uh, yeah. I, you know, the end of the story is I never saw Michael Bryan. I never, I never made the contact. Uh, <laughs> and I never said that again, though. I did tell the story once at a speech in, I, I think it was with Comcast or something big. And it was the last time I ever did business with Comcast. Like that story kicked me out of there. there it will happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> That's so do you ever get caught like that, that you might say something that you think is just funny and jovial, but uh, people take it the wrong way? Well, yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, I, too, have a company that I, I have a I had a funny I had a funny pantyhose story, which just about every woman on the planet has a funny pantyhose story. Uh-huh. And it was um, uh, a group uh, for the. Um, oh, shoot assistance. Um, um, I've gone totally crazy on forgetting uh, the, the um, admins. It was the admin, you know, how they have admin week. Yeah. And so I told this story and it was about 75 people and hooting and hollering and everybody loved it. And four people wrote me up for sexual innuendo. And I, oh my was, God. I, I was supposed to be invited back. So I can't mm. tell you how 
if it is. I can't tell you how real it is. And I can't tell you when I'm not going to stay up in it because I have been telling that story for years and it didn't yeah. offend anybody. So let's go ahead and get into what one of my friends uh, says. It's gotten so politically correct. We can't do anything. And I don't mm. believe that. And I said, no, that, that you, we still have to, to try. We still have to at least try to lighten this crazy world up. So that's my passion <laughs> and my purpose. But, but that's why I <laughs> <laughs> June the, Clines, I think everyone, the voice the yeah, yeah we're losing like we're losing robot. you June yeah June you're frozen as well if you or can June hear. has an internet issue but Garen Bulgogi over here yeah. is in the so, house so, 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 more, more, so, you, you, so, so. oh it's Max Headroom yeah we got Max Headroom for you. June okay Klein, you're June gonna love this there you recording. go we have we have live June Klein back <laughs> oh LCC oh LJC <laughs> Live June Klein. This is Garen Bellaney, and oh, yeah. Dan still can't pronounce uh, Garen's name. Yeah, I don't know what with it my, is. Uh, with with that, Micro that, Studio. I, I, it's just a Bellaney, right? Bellaney? Bellaney? Bellaney. Uh, a. I don't know why that is. Like, you know, I have you a, drive I have down a, a lane, if you remember have, that. I also have problems with uh, uh, words that have a Y in them, like spelling, like the word Odyssey. Try to spend the oh my gosh. I, I told you I fixed my brakes last weekend. <laughs> okay. Did I tell you? It's so you know, I went there to get my brakes done, and it's like two weeks. I'm like, two weeks. Anyway, so I bought this stuff and I did it myself. You feel like you could do anything. I mean, the, when you're a kid, you would just like fix stuff because you just had you didn't have the money, so you fix stuff, and then you start paying for other people to do it, and you forget. That you could do it. It's easy. You ever see these people working on the cars? I mean, mm. they're just, you know, they're just guys or gals. They're easy enough to do. And so I change it. Feels When I stop my car now, I have such confidence. You know, I am braking like a champ. And then they wanted to charge me 150 bucks to change the in-cabin air filter thing. You know the in-cabin air filter? Have you ever had these? Oh, you got to change it. June As Klein, opposed to the out-cabin? Well, air filter yeah, yeah, yeah. there's an out of cabin and that's there's right well i you know I, sometimes i have an out of cabin experience yeah so, so the so the inside some of these jokes are just for him june <laughs> it's, anyway june klein have you ever changed your cabin filter in your vehicle does she not hear me poor june, poor june. no we're not hearing her <laughs> oh you're gonna have to one more one more time june if you could pop out and then pop you're back have in to do your thing again. yes Yes. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> this is well, uh, this is yeah. This is good stuff. Listen, so, I, B Garen Bellucci. <laughs> what did he write? <laughs> Chris Stone. Can you get the good people? Well, here it is. Can you get the good people at Sure Incorporated to send me some of those headphones? Oh, these headphones? Yes. Yeah. Those are pretty. Tell us about those. What is that? What kind of crazy? These headphones? are the. Uh, these are the Sure. SE215 in-ear noise canceling uh, headphones, uh, in-ear monitors. Uh, they make, they even make Dan Jordan's voice sound like butter in my ears. Uh, no if way. You didn't think the Samsung Q2U microphone, right, located right down here in the corner, um, could do the job. It uh, it makes it even better. And That's these are cool. purple. These are purple. These are exclusive purple. Uh, because they uh, sure did this, uh, and we have June back. Oh, well, sure back. did this um, this thing where uh, they asked everybody, "Hey, we're going to make a color um, of headphones uh, in ear monitors." What? And they it put it up for vote, and purple won. So, really? Yeah, and so I, I, you know, I like I like purple. It's it's on brand. June, are can you hear us? And can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 You sound okay. Great. I want to do over and I'm coming to one of your studios. And <laughs> yeah. <I'm coming> okay. <laughs> so June, well, before, I, before we lose you to another, the, um, uh, I just did a podcast and it was fine. So hmm. I did. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't deal with just fine here at the Dan Jordan live show. We have Chris Stone, producer extraordinaire. And so the high quality, uh, the, the machinery that we put in force here doesn't, it, it doesn't ally with, align with the uh you know the average stuff well then you know, i'm coming 
I'm coming to one of your places and we'll do this. That again would be and- great. We'll oh, we'll have we'll have biscuits and yes. and tea uh, here in in Duluth. But uh, June, I've got a question. What would you consider is your ideal client, the person that you help to sort of you know overcome their uh, you know and try to get them you know to be more humorous and to use humorous in their in use humor in their um their humorous bones in um in their business Who, who's your perfect client well if you go back to that lovely website of mine i'm so excited you will see at the very top exactly who i'm choosing to work with now i started out like i said in student financial aid a hundred years ago and then i went to women's conferences uh, as far as that that model But what I'm really passionate about now is getting CEOs and execs to understand the power they have of when they initiate appropriate laughter. So I am doing retreats now and I just uh, did one in Utah and six CEOs were there and it was transformational and life changing for them because they had no idea what they didn't know. And if you'll Mm. stop right there on um, on that quadrants, the funny, see, this is, this is my proprietary information and what people don't understand. And what I learned from really 30 years of, of speaking, but it was actually the first week that I quit my day job and went full time that I was speaking to four different groups in the same week. And it did not go great at all of them. And Mm -hmm. I didn't understand. So I started to analyze and I discovered that there were comedic styles of audiences. And so what I discovered is some are crazy, some are caring, some are cerebral, or some are caustic. And so now what I do is have execs take the exam, take the quiz, which takes just two minutes, if that. I think you've both taken it before, haven't you? You've yes. It. Okay, I'll be great. I'll, I want to know your response as well. But first, let me just say that this is is life changing for people, marriages, um, parents that didn't get their kids or kids that didn't get their parents. People understand that their style of humor is charming or harming and helping their personal and professional relationships. So this is a powerful tool right here. Wow. Yeah, I I, th- I seem to recall I was crazy. And Chris Stone, you're caustic. I would not. What did you call I, me, Dan? I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would see you no other way, Dan. But this this is what I want to say for the group that um, reaches out to me through the website. I will give you a free link. Uh, the 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 quiz is 1997 to take that. And then you get four videos behind that just to verify which style you end up being. And then for this group and for now, I would love to offer that link, the freebie, the free link so that you can uh, know more about your comedic styles because it really can make or break your relationship. So if you'll just fill out the form at the bottom, then I'll get tagged and I'll send you that free link. Does that make sense? Fill out the form at the bottom. So, so the, the form contact. is all the way down here. Yeah. So the ha- Let's have a conversation. So but what ha- I have to go to your website. Yeah. Yeah. Just go to the website or put it. If, if they want to put quiz, would I have access to anybody that writes quiz in your comments and I could send it to them? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we can do that, but he'll he'll put something. We'll put something on the uh, screen to your website. Oh yeah, JuneKlein.com. Look at that. Chris Stone is always just go to JuneKlein.com and take there, care of. It. There you go. If you want to know, I'll, I'll be glad to send you the free link. So June Klein, I am uh, really interested in this uh, retreat that you said that you do. Mm-hmm. So you get people, they come there. What, what, what is entail aside from taking a quiz, what are you actually, if I were to take it, what would I walk away with? A, a, you know, a better marriage. I'll be better looking all that stuff. Well, some do walk away with a better marriage. The last it's not a I- miracle thing, Dan, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. The, the better looking you two cannot get any more better, any more oh. better look. So there you go. That's it. 
<laughs> you you need to take Garen uh, uh, Garen Balachiku uh, up on his micro studio. Yes, check this out. Uh, and and this is good not just not just for uh, I'm not saying this for you I'm just using this as an opportunity to talk about this because uh, the difference between you know an executive or someone in their in their room uh, with uh, the fan going in the background and the and bad sound when they're on a, a, a meeting call uh, and, and someone who's using a professional kind of mini studio like only Garen can put together is light years even. Even if people make fun of you and say, "Oh, look how fancy you are with the with your stuff there," they're jealous, and you're you move up in stature. It's that easy. It's that easy to to move up just by by making things better. So everybody, anybody who's watching this thing, check out Garen. He's a good guy. He's yep. got good hair, and uh, chicks dig him. <laughs> All right. So, so we have we have somebody that's taking you up on the quiz, Jeff clays jeff clays he needs it because he's dry as sandpaper the guy wow. is like imagine he's here watching us dan you don't yeah. like you don't shower him with like uh insults Let thank you, you jeff jeff thank clays you. jeff clays is a what we call a fotd fan of the deej and i'm i i i, re I really like uh <laughs> jeff and he uh <laughs> jeff jeff we spoke we spoke last uh last week i think on friday he's just a good dude and uh he's one of those people that just follows through with everything that he says he's done and i wish him nothing but great success and you know that jeff uh garen he's gonna fly down to atlanta to set it up with you he's just trying to get out of canada that's what he's trying to do saskatoon baby he's just there's nothing up there but uh basketball nets and a hair product clearly that's it. Um, that's, Wait, so yeah. June Klein, I interrupted you for something. Uh, what were you talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking. Are you stuck? Is yeah, she we're just frozen again. Oh, she's June. frozen again. <laughs> it might be an internet issue, but I want to find out about those retreat things. Uh, you know, how long are they, and and what do they do, I and mean, how many days is it? I could keep going. I got no problem. I, I am like Mr. I'm like Stretch Armstrong. I'm Stretch Deed Strong. Oh, I spoke with Patrick Tinia. I didn't finish my air filter story. It should be Deej Armstrong, not Stretch Deed Strong. Oh, well, you're... no, Deed Strong is pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah. Deed. Oh, I, no, let I'm us know just... in the chat. Stretch <laughs> Deed Strong or Deej <laughs> Stretch. Oh, or. Oh, my God. What is no, happening? It's Stretch Deed I like Deed Strong. You I know, think uh, we have a robot voice going on from June. How did you get that? Or are you using your? Uh... <laughs> oh, that's good. Garen Bulgogi could figure that out too. He's yes. probably using yes. this thing. Um, um, yes. What, so were you, I, what were you saying, Dan? Go ahead. Oh, that is awesome. Gosh, I'm. I mean, I'm rarely jealous. Oh, June, but... June is back. Can you hear us? No, she... we can't hear you. <laughs> 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 oh my god yeah yeah you know this is the best commercial for uh for yes. garen there yes. ever is june is frozen oh oh look who's here frozen marketing is telling us about <laughs> june being <laughs> yeah, he's, he's frozen with the fear of teach this is the funniest dan jordan live show ever we had we had this yeah, that yeah. was like was that awesome. couldn't have been better yeah that was and, really and june good. we can't hear you i'm sorry okay. all right well june let i tell you what we're gonna do we just hang out there and flap your wings and let's uh, go ape everyone yes and this is what you need to do understand you guys out there can do it i i that i'm gonna finish that that filter story if it kills me <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a tease for next week anyhow if you get there's so when you're a kid you did so much more kind of just just experimenting and trying things and everything you learn in life is through trial trial and error. anything big that was ever created it was through trial and error you learn so much more by getting out there messing up adapting changing and all that stuff and so if you think you're not funny if you think you don't have, you know, those type of muscles, that, that creativity stuff, 
go out there and just get one joke. My dad used to tell me, get a helium balloon, exactly right. My dad used to tell me uh, to have, you know, always have two things, have, you know, two magic tricks that you know how to do, have two songs that you could sing the whole way through, have two jokes in your back pocket that you always have prepared. Just, mm. you know, just anything. And I have a standard joke, you know, they want to, you know, a guy walks into a psychiatrist's office wearing nothing but saran wrap. The psychiatrist takes one look at him and says, I can clearly see you're nuts. And so it's like, you know, one, you have these things that are just, you know, there for the taking at any time. And once you prepare, and, and sometimes you'll mess up and sometimes you'll get kicked out of an office, but you'll learn a little from it. Or off and, the internet. And yeah, or off the internet. I mean, it's easy enough to get them, but you, you can't just read them off the internet and chuckle and tell them to your friends. Perfect them, practice them, put them in your pocket and an opportunity will arise. The, the worst thing you could do is you get to the point where you say, I got a joke. You know, because then you're all messed up, <laughs> you know, because then they're expecting something. But if it's in conversation and you just lay it out there, people think you're so darn creative. You know, I do that. I can play two songs on the piano. I could sing two songs. I maybe say two, two songs on guitar. I got a couple of jokes. I could I could do, you know, I could juggle. You know, I'll do that at a party. They think I'm like brilliant. They've seen my whole repertoire. That's all I got. You know? I think we need to have that. You need to have that ready when when we have issues with uh, audio and video from our guest. That's right. right. We need to have a right. now. Can you hear home us? Home sweet June home Klein? is one. Yeah, I think she can hear us. We can't hear her. Oh, but we can't. Hear. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, this is a. Uh, we have a recording somewhere, Dan, of you performing Home Sweet Home by Motley Crue on the piano and singing it. Do I? It, oh. It's actually on a podcast, on the Sales Energizer podcast, as an Easter egg. Oh, really? At the very end of a, a, one of your uh, podcasts, we put that on there. <laughs> How awesome. about that for a tease for, yeah. uh, for somebody to That's listen awesome. to it? I keep waiting for someone to say, hey, I love that episode where at the end... You said Home Sweet Home by Motley Crue. Is I'm, that I, it hasn't happened yet? We have to do uh, more of those things. We have to do more uh, podcasts. I think I'm going to have to. Actually, the New Year's the New Year is coming up, and so we might have to have a resolution. Yes, a resolution with stuff. June Klein, I can't tell you how fine it is to see you on this thing, and every once in a while we can hear you when we learn so much. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> When you guys are out there, listen, you can make anything funny. If you can make this show funny, you can make anything funny. Chris Stone, thank you so much. Once again, taking care of business like nobody. All you people watching, I wish nothing but good things to happen to you all for the rest of your lives. June Klein, you are the best. I'm going to call you when this is done so I can hear your lovely voice. And everybody, eat well, live long, and prosper. Go get them today. Well, if your sales team sucks and you don't know what to do, call Deech. 678-910-9912. Call Deech. 678-910-9912.